Just drop a line and reel them in. It's good old boys, come fishing again. Just drop a line and reel them in. It's good old boys, come fishing again. Yeah, it's that time again to drop a line. So sit back and relax and let's go fishing again. Come along as we join John Shaw and today's special guest. Reel them in on Fishing with the Good Old Boys. Good fishing. Just drop a line and reel them in. It's good old boys. Come fishing again. Just drop a line and reel them in. It's good old boys. Come fishing again. It's good old boys. Come fishing again. Good morning, folks. I'm John Shaw, and I'm an excited kind of guy today at San Carlos Indian Reservation at the beautiful Takalai Lake, where there's some beautiful trophy bass we're going after today. We have joining us Greg Hines. He's going to be a regular with us from now on. Greg, who do we have fishing today with you? Today we got Dave Gleavy. He's uh, regularly a Californian, but he's moved to Arizona. And Dave was one of the fishermen that developed the flipping technique. Mm. He's been successful across the whole United States, winning tournaments with it, and. Uh, I think Dave can teach us an awful lot about fishing our lakes here in Arizona and the flipping technique. So folks, you stay tuned. We'll be right back with a great show. You know, Dave, a lot of times people come to the lake and they don't really know how to find fish or where to start and stuff. So today, why don't you go through your process of when you're coming to a new lake, how do you find fish? Where do we start at? Well, the first thing I do on a new lake like this <coughs> is when I get out on the water, I first check to see what depth the bait is at on this 4ID. Mm -hmm. uh, say it's about 10 foot deep, well, then I know the bass are going to be in that general area. Right. General depth feeding on those shad. Okay, the bass are feeding on the shad normally or relate to them then. Yeah. And so that depth range. Okay. Right. And well, the, the what about colors or lures? Where do we start on that spectrum? Well, if they're feeding on shad, you want a shad type lure, right? Uh huh. Okay. Uh, first thing I do is take a color selector. I've always wondered about those or and how much you on rely them. on them or what? Oh, I rely on them totally. Uh, it's got three color bands uh, muddy, stain, and clear. And this water here, you can see it's down. See this probe down there about three feet, so it's stained water. Mm -hmm. So I just use this middle dial. I turn this thing on. It says purple, green, and chartreuse. Chartreuse is a fluorescent band. Uh huh. Now as I lower this thing down, we'll get it down here about 10 feet. These cords are marked. Yeah, that's about 10 foot, and it's showing red. Red. So at that depth, we want to use red. So what I would use is probably a, a, a garland skirt and double tail and smoke red flight. Okay. And that's the color that the bass can best see in that depth of water. Okay. You can still catch fish on other colors, but you'll catch more fish on the right color. Okay, well that sure gives us a place to start. We got the depth, we're gonna fish around 10 feet, and we should use something with red in it then. So I see you got a lizard there, it has a little bit of sort of red and blue it's in it. Reddish and, and blue. I think I'm going to dig through my box and see if I can find a red bait and I'll throw that a little bit. All right. Okay. <coughs> I think what we'll try first, though, is up a little shallower into the, the purples and chartreuses and see if we can flip some bass off of these uh, tulies because they're producing oxygen with, these, with this sun. Okay. It's, okay. Let's explain that a little bit to me as far as the oxygen. The well, uh, during the night, green vegetation takes oxygen out of the water uh -huh. and then it, during the day as the sun is on it it causes photosynthesis and the plants produce oxygen and then okay. the fish will move in shallow uh, 
usually the crawdads and, and perch will be active on the on the shoreline there. Yeah, I, I noticed a lot of fish on the shoreline when we launched there. Yeah. And so that's what they're doing up in that rich oxygen zone feeding in. That's right. And, and as so it gets hotter, like this water here is is over 80 degrees. Uh huh. So there isn't going to be hardly any oxygen below two feet until you get to the thermal climb. Mm -hmm. But in those first couple of feet, there'll be oxygen, and what fish are shallow will be in the first couple of feet, so you don't need to fish much deeper than that. Okay. So we'll fish the first two to three feet and cover some of the shoreline and see what we come up with. That's right. There he is. All right. Oh! Good shot, Greg. All right. Nice little chunky bass. Boy, you're sitting right up underneath that little toolies there. Yeah, that's good shade, so they can uh, run out and hit something that comes by like that worm. Good spot to hide. You know, Dave, since we've chosen to fish shallow here for a couple hours, why don't you explain to the people what your favorite technique is and how to do it? Well, one of my favorite techniques, not the favorite now. Okay. Uh, all these techniques are just tools, you know, like a carpenter's got all hammers and saws and yeah. wrenches. And, uh, but flipping is one of, one of my favorites. Uh, what we're doing here is uh, fishing real shallow. One reason is because the water is so hot. It's, uh, what did it say on there? Yeah, uh, I think it's 82 degrees. Yeah, 82 degrees. Yeah. Well, when you get that hot, there's not much oxygen below two or three feet. Uh -huh. So what fish are shallow will be on this green cover because it's producing oxygen during the day uh -huh. when the sun's on it through photosynthesis. And anything below three feet is, you might as well forget it because there's no, not enough oxygen to hold the fish there and they're going to be in a deeper bunch mm -hmm. of water than, than this. Sort of deeper water where it's a little bit more dark and a little bit better oxygen for them. Well, go through quickly how, how we do flip. You know, it looks real easy here, but uh, how much line, what equipment we need? Well, what I use is a, a quantum flipping, flipping rod. Mm -hmm. uh, it's seven and a half foot long and, and it's uh, pretty, got pretty stout in the tip for a quick uh -huh. set a quick set on those fish so you can get them out of cover real quick. Um, well, what size line do you use, David? A uh, size line I use is probably 25 most of the 25. time. Sometimes I use 20, sometimes 30 pound test, depending on the cover and the mm -hmm. size fish I'm into. Right. Uh, do you ever use real light line at all? Uh, yeah, I do. I, do I, you? I do a lot of flipping in, uh, well, during the pre-spring or even in the winter time with, uh, eight, 10, 12 pound test and gets it. Uh -huh. But the only thing with that is that you have to regulate your set so you don't break the line on the jerk. Right, that has to be quite a trick there. Yeah, it is, but using real fine wire hooks, you don't have that much problem of hooking the fish because mm -hmm. uh, they go in a lot easier than these heavy hooks. Well, let's show the people the exact motion we're using. And one of my things that I see a lot of people do and I've had problems with is how much line do you start with? Dave, well, you know, sometimes I get too much line, I'm here and I'm all tangled up. <laughs> Where's the starting point? Well, the starting point is to get, to hold this line like this, let it run on your finger. Uh huh. Don't, uh, don't grab a hold of the line and hold it, actually hold it, but let it slide on your finger or the back of your hand or whatever's comfortable. You mm -hmm. can use your thumb yeah. just like that and never hold the line. It's always sliding on your hand and then just pull some line out so you got your lure down by the reel and your arm all the way out. Okay, that's, that's about the right amount. Yeah, you got your rod straight up in the air right. and the lure swing, swings back to the reel handle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you got about approximately 15 feet of line and that's about how much you use most okay. of the time. Okay. Uh, and the idea is to just let it swing out and when you go to, once you get it out there, one, if you want to pick it up again, you don't uh, pick it up with the rod like this and bring it to yourself. What you do is you pull it back with your hand, okay. let it swing back, then all you got to do is drop your rod and, and raise it right. up. Right, there's, there's it not an out. awful lot of rod motion, it's more in your hand. No. You controls just pull it. it in, drop your rod and raise it. Okay. And always follow the lure to your target with your hand. 
Uh -huh. In other words, you're letting it slide on the finger, so that's your control. It actually slows the bait as it's getting to the target. Right. How important is that nice soft entry, Dave? Is that uh, when you're fishing real shallow, it's real important to have a nice soft entry so you don't spook the fish to where it's going to take them too much time to make up their mind if they want to hit your bait or not. Right, By that so time, you've got it out of there. Okay. So uh, what you want to do is have a real soft entry, but there are times when fish are really, really active and you need to make a big splash, just throw it up in the air and let it fall. Uh, just and they'll they'll have it just like that. So that's just actually part of the pattern, the presentation is that's part right. of the pattern. Yeah, there's a lot of different patterns in that. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you want to use an extremely heavy weight for, for your bait to sink real fast, like in the hotter weather. Okay. Something I've noticed, Dave, that I see you do here is every time you uh, make your flip, you're coming all the way back with your hand. That's right. Is that right. the right technique there? Uh, I if, see people if with If you go like this and you hold the line, mm -hmm. you're at a disadvantage right there. Okay. For one thing, you got too much line out. In other words, if you were to set the hook, you'd have your rod way up here. Uh huh. But if you set the hook holding the line, you don't. There's too much rod out there and too much leverage on one arm. Uh huh. And you could have actually jerked the rod out of my hand by doing <laughs> it with one arm like this. Uh huh. But you can't set the hook as hard, and besides that, you may cut your line on the reel because you tend to pull on it at the same time. Right. Your line's cutting back across that's your reel. That's right, and you may lose a nice fish that way. Yeah, I think that's a very important part of flipping right there. So what you want to do is just follow it all the way to the rod, and you're ready when it hits the water, and you just lower it down, just like that. And then if you have a this type of reel, this is a Quantum Pro 2 reel, uh -huh. and it's got a thumb bar. You can cast with it. Just It's got a free spool like any other reel. You can flip this little dial right here, and mm -hmm. every time you let go of the thumb bar, it engages. So that's what they call the flipping feature, right? That's the flipping feature. And okay. now, if you like, you want to flip a tree like this right here. Say it's ten feet of water, and you don't know what depth the fish is going to be at, and you get up close enough where you got a lot of control, and you let it go down, and then it's it's too far to the bottom, so you push the button mm -hmm. until it hits the bottom. And then just work it like you would normally would with a casting rod. Okay. I'm noticing your eyes, Dave. You seem to be concentrating down here. Is that is that where you watch your rod tip or your line or? No, I'm, I'm watching. I'm watching the cover to try to pick out the shadiest part of it because that's where the bass is going to hide, so mm -hmm. he thinks nobody can see him. So you're reading reading your structure. Right. And something comes by and and then you can nail it. Or mm -hmm. you you might see, like in this bush, there's a limb coming out at an angle. You have to look at the subtlety in the cover. Mm -hmm. So there's a limb hanging out. Well, that you know that's going to produce sh or shade uh -huh. because it's laying uh, parallel. Uh -huh. And this, the vertical stuff, there's much less shade on it, and it's uh -huh. not as much area for the fish to hide. So we want to look for any area that will present shade for the fish right. so we can hide underneath it. Or even if there was a, uh, an oddball log stuck in the bush, well, mm -hmm. there's liable to be a fish right underneath the log. Mm -hmm. And, and you want to be ready as soon as it goes down under that log for a hit. Mm -hmm. Well, what about the hook set, Dave? Uh, a lot of times it seems like when I set the hook, I got a lot of extra line. I'm out of control. You know, what do you do when to... When you're flipping? Yeah. I, I set the hook and I got here and the fish is up on top. Well, uh, one thing you want to do is, is keep an eye on, on your uh, electronics and make sure that you know what depth of water is mm -hmm. and you know how deep it is on the bank. Uh-huh. A lot of times you're fishing a bank where you can see the bottom, so you can figure about what the taper is down to the bottom so you know all the time, no matter what distance you're flipping to the bank, how deep you're going to sink. Right. And as you go along, you just you use the same amount of line and, and you maneuver your boat. You have to maneuver okay. your boat. So that that's so a big key, the boat positioning. Right. Right. Okay. You've got to keep your boat the same distance from whatever you're flipping all the time unless you're going a little deeper so you got to get a little closer so okay. that by the time it hits the bottom you got your rod down here about parallel or mm -hmm. even lower and then uh, when you set the hook you've got plenty of set but whereas mm -hmm. if you f you flip in some place and and you got too much line out and it hits the bottom you're up here and you go to move it and you get bit right. and you don't have much to set the hook yeah, with. Yeah that's the problem I have sometimes
Hi, I'm Greg Hines with this week's fishing tip. A lot of you might not have learned to cast these bait casting reels, and so I'm going to teach you a little bit about how I started out with them. The hardest thing is when they overspin on you. In uh, fishing, we call that a professional overrun to the average fisherman's a backlash. I'll try to teach you how not to do that. The way I recommend starting is to tighten down your casting drag real tight to where the line will hardly come out. It just barely comes out. That way you're going to be able to cast and you're not going to get the backlash. As you get better and better and more and more comfortable casting, I loosen it up. And the proper adjustment should be where it just goes down by itself real slow. Just back it off a little bit where it just, the bait just falls, just about like that. And that should be about the proper adjustment for your cast. Catch a schoolie here. Nice little bass out there chasing shad. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of trees in here to fish, Greg. But uh, like the one uh, you just caught that fish out of, now it's on a point, and the other fish was on a point inside a cove. So uh -huh. I think we need to concentrate on points. Now that's that's that that's the way we find uh, patterns. Uh huh. Well, is that, that pretty typical this time of year that the fish will sort of school up like that and get on points feeding uh, on shad? Uh, normally more so when the water's falling, but there's a lot of times you can find them on points schooled up like that. Uh, and if you don't have any electronics in your boat to where you can tell how deep it is, that's the one place you can always find fishes on points. Uh huh. So that's one of the definites if you're going to a new lake, just to always fish the points in. That's right. There's every point's different. Mm-hmm. As far as how steep it is or how long it is or how far out it goes, uh, what side of the lake it's on. I mean, there's a lot of variables in it. Uh-huh. People lose fish at the boat when they try to deadlift them in the boat. Uh-huh. The best way to do it is to get the fish under control and just whoa and just pull them around in a figure eight don't force them but kind of lead him uh -huh, just lead the fish you got yeah. him hooked by the nose so you can lead him around pretty easy right and then once you got him coming towards the boat with his own swimming ability you just help him Lifting. up just like that there's no strain on the tackle the rod the line nothing okay that's a good point there Whoo, that thing fought good boy when you sat on that fish i thought it was a three or four pound fish at least I didn't know if he had me or I had him. <laughs> in good shape. Looks good. There you go. That hook worked good. Dave, how come sometimes when we're fishing, we'll catch fish that are real white or like that fish here has got real good color to him? What's happening with Well, the fish? a lot of times they're dark like this because they're in the shade and, and, and they, they, they'll change the same color as the mm -hmm. area they're in for protection and also to hide so that yeah. something unsuspecting comes by and they can eat it. So it's just natural predator camouflage then? That's, that's right. Hmm, that's interesting. Well, there he goes. He's in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> Heading back home. Well, that black and shot too seems to be working real well. These are kind of yeah, available seem, here. Seems to be the color of the day. There he is. He's pretty good. A little bit bigger fish. Whoa, man, these fish are strong. Boy, they are. I wouldn't know if I want to hook an eight pounder or lose myself. <laughs> Oh, that's just, a nice fish. Just oh. swing him up there. Yeah. That's beautiful. Nice chunky bass. Well, he, we just ran over that spot three times with the boat, and I just I dragged it right underneath the boat, and he'd go, whoop, Maybe we need to me up. the trees. <laughs> Wake him up a little bit. They think these are woodworms coming out. He headed right back down in there. You know, Dave, does that ever bother the fish, releasing them back into the school like that? Uh... I think it might a little bit, but if it, if it were smallmouth, yes, it would spook them all right away. Uh-huh. Especially if the fish is 
bleeding it all from the outside of the body rather than inside. Uh -huh. So, so the blood the spooks them, huh? Yeah, well, we, the minute we, the blood hits the water, they're gone. Yeah, you released that first one right back in that same spot, and I caught that one right out of there again. Maybe he said, go ahead and try it. It's a heck of a good joyride. <laughs> Let's tear their tackle up. Yeah, they even turned into a movie star here. <laughs> One other unique feature about this area here is that those trees on the back side of these in front of us here are barely sticking out of the water, and what you have over there is 20, 30 feet of water. Uh -huh. Out here in these trees, you notice how much taller they are. Well, that's how much shallower it is here. They're telling you so that there's, there's a hump on yeah, the bottom here. Yeah, just actually a hump here in the bottom. Yeah, and uh, the fish are relating to this hump. Come on, keep away from those limbs. <coughs> Look at those boils come up. That Jeez. is a nice fish. Right hey, we, we got, got a, a nice one. one here. Ho! <laughs> hey. Boy, it's amazing how hard these fish are fighting. Oh, I noticed that. They're just tearing oh. us up. Nice chunky bass. That's the best way to pick them up by the lower lip. Just pinch real hard and it paralyzes them. Then you can take your hook out without getting hooked in the finger. Pretty nice bass. They're real clean and healthy. Yeah, he's in good shape. Nice and fat. It's all right. We'll put that baby back in the water here. Let him fight somebody else another day. Something I wanted to show you this week is how to tie a simple, easy knot. What I use is a Palomar knot. I use it on all my baits. You simply double your line run it through the eye of the bait. An overhand knot, you take that loop from the overhand knot and swing your bait through it, okay? You start to pull it down, wet it where it slides down nice and easy, and that's the knot, that's all there is to it. Very quick, simple, easy knot. That's the tip for the week, we'll catch you next week. Folks, we've been learning so much here at Takalai that we're going to come back to the same lake next week to give us some more. Greg and Mr. Dave Glebe. It's been fun. It's been a great trip. We've had a real, real good experience on this beautiful lake. Looking forward to some real nice trips this year. Okay. Join us here next week, folks. <laughs>